today I'm going to paint the Scorpec Destroyers out of the Indominus box. And uh, I'm going to start off with a tip that I... I'm sure that it's widely known on the internet, but I just discovered it recently. Um, these these guys are on 50 mil bases, which unfortunately do not fit in the normal size paint handle like this. They fit in the big one, but I only have one of the big one, and I wanted all of them to have a, a handle. So if you unscrew this, the top part, you're left with the exposed screw, and very conveniently... It is the most common screw in the universe, which is a quarter 20 screw, which just means that uh, there's 20. Wait, now I'm quarter 20. It's quarter inch and the threads on it, there are 20 threads per inch. Um, and so if you just glue a quarter 20 nut on the bottom of a base, you can just screw the model directly onto the paint handle. Uh, like I said, I'm sure this is a thing, but I just realized the other day that you could do such a thing. All right, so now I'm gonna get started. And I'm gonna start with silver. And I'm batch painting these guys today, so I'm gonna do all of one color on all three models, and then move on to the next color on all three models, and see if I can get all three done in an hour. So I'm starting with Iron Breaker just like I always do on the Necrons. Just gonna coat pretty much everything with this color. As you can see, my uh, the models are not glued down to the base because I take them off to do the basing. So it's gonna make it a little more annoying, but normally you'd wanna glue your model down to something, but that's okay. I'm not super concerned with it. So I'm just going to base coat with Iron Breaker the whole way around. And as I've said before with these Necrons, the base coat does not have to be perfectly smooth. Uh, how you would normally want it with some other things doesn't matter. Because the Necrons are made of living metal, so if they're a little swirly or there's a couple brush strokes here or there, it'll just add to the effect that they're not exactly smooth metal as you might expect. And then you don't have to deal with thinning down metallic paint, which sounds like a pain in the ass. I don't, I don't know if it actually would be. But in my mind, you can't just add water to a metallic paint. I could be wrong, though. But since this is straight from the pot, we're not doing any of that nonsense. We're getting a pot of paint. We're opening it. We're dipping our paintbrush in it. And hopefully, you know, every I think every person who uh, who creates content on the internet always says well my goal is to help people we all know your goal is to make money like at the end of the day we know what you're doing if you happen to help people great we know what you're up to though um so i'm not gonna say it that way but i do hope that this can show people at least if they watch it who and they haven't painted a lot before that it doesn't have to be difficult you can, obviously, take it to the, the nth degree and get incredible, crazy results. But you can also just dip your, pot, your paintbrush in the pot and go to town. So I hope that it, at least a couple people maybe see these videos and decide to take up miniature painting. And then I can, like, I don't know, claim to be the, the world's greatest paint philanthropist or something. So that's the first one done. Moving on to the next one. Still with the Iron Breaker. Just getting it all mixed up in there. Wow. 
Matthew James in the chat just like having a bad day, man. You've got a you've got a black army anyway. You've got a you just spray that whole thing with the black. Put a couple of yellow bits here and there. Maybe a silver gun. You're all set, man. You know, actually, if we think about it, um, if anyone is not local, um, maybe watching this on YouTube, uh, may not know who Matthew James is. But around here, in southeastern Georgia, Matthew James is a local folk hero. And uh, he took over the Augusta Warhammer scene when a certain someone abandoned us for Michigan or Minnesota or whatever. And I think it's pretty clear that he caused the pandemic. He ran events for maybe six months and then boom, pandemic. I think he got sick of running events and was like, you know what? The only way to stop this global pandemic. And you know, Global pandemic is basically as bad as, or as oppressive as those uh, Iron Warriors rules were, Iron Hands rules were for a while, so it's really not that surprising. Alright, almost done with the second base coat here. Just make sure to get it all up in the, in the nooks and the crannies of the Necrons. Alright, set him aside. And on to the third one. What's great about batch painting is, uh, especially for, for on stream, is that, you know, usually if I need something to dry and it isn't dry, well, I'll hit it with the hairbrush. The, rather, the hairbrush. The air... The hair dryer, wow, struggle today. The hair dryer, and uh, or just walk away and let it dry. Obviously, hair dryer is an option on stream, but it's a little loud, and obviously you can't just walk away. Uh, so batch painting allows the first couple models to be drying while you're doing the next models, and uh, so I think that's going to work out nicely. Thankfully, the the scheme we do on Necrons helps out a bit, and uh, you can put wet paint on on top of wet paint. But I'd be curious what people think uh, since I'm painting the. The models out of the ninth edition, totally not a starter set. Starter set. Does everyone agree that Space Marines are still going to be the thing, or is someone quietly optimistic about another army? So it seems everything I've read seems to think that it's still just Space Marines. But I obviously haven't read everything, and. Those people may just be Debbie Downers. So if you've read something that has hinted to you that another army might be the new hotness, please let me know. All right, that's the base coat done. Just gonna rinse off the brush and then go to step two. And something that I forgot to do, but thankfully there's only three models, so it's easy to remember, is that when you're batch painting, you want to keep your models somewhere near you in a line um, and in a line in order of if you painted them so that you know for a fact this is the most dry model this is the least dry model so when you go to apply the next step you're not applying the next coat to a model that hasn't had time to dry yet chaos space marines undefeated in ninth edition that is true although both of your games have been against a terrible army. 
one of the greatest opponents of all time, but a terrible army. Yeah, Tau getting to keep Overwatch is rough. We're going to see how that goes. All right, so I'm going to go to the next step here, and that is Black Templar Contrast Paint. And I'm just going to paint in all the joints of these models and basically everywhere on them that isn't a piece of armor. And, uh, yeah, while the Chaos Space Marines happen to be undefeated now, I can say without a doubt they will not be after Thursday. The White Scars are going to give it to them for sure. And if you have not seen uh, one of these Necron videos before, um... As I've said, you can put this... I'm batch painting here, so everything is dry. But normally, you can put this black contrast paint directly over uh, the silver, even if it isn't quite dry yet, because it will swirl a little bit and just make the metal look like it's, you know, something else is happening beyond just a just normal sheet of metal. And with Necrons, it's not a problem. I'm just doing all the legs first. I like to do work my way up on a model, typically, uh, or down sometimes, but I usually like to work in a direction. It helps me not miss stuff. So I'm just doing all the legs, and then I'll move to the torso bit, or the rib cage area, and then the spine, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to shake up my contrast paint here a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to get all this pelvic area with the contrast paint. These Necrons seem to really lend themselves to super simple paint schemes like this that I'm doing, where you can just put a, make a bunch of details that are all right next to each other the same color, or you can go absolutely insane and make these guys look amazing. So that'll be really cool to see when uh, when the non-straight from the pot painters get a hold of these mon miniatures, what they'll do with them. All right, and I'm gonna move up the spinal column here, making sure I got all that in there. And then this, he's got a, he's got a like spine here that isn't actually connected to the rest of his body. I don't know how that works exactly. I don't know. Maybe there's an energy field that connects them. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's going to be black. Whether it's connected to the rest of the spine or not is not important all right that's that I'm gonna grab the arms now oh I missed the inside of the hip bone now I'm gonna grab the arm joints Oh, and I'm just noticing this guy doesn't actually have hands. <laughs> His weapon is bolted to him. Sorry about that, guys. My phone decided it uh, didn't need to be connected to the Wi-Fi anymore. <laughs> but we're back now. Still going at these elbow joints. I don't know if there actually was a drop on uh, on your guys' end. On my end, it 
told me it was attempting to reconnect. If it didn't for you, then I'd just sound like a crazy person. In which case, great. Sounds perfect. So I've got a couple decisions to make here about what part of this weapon is going to be black and what part is going to be other colors. And I think I'm just going to do... <laughs> you need the Wi-Fi to escape my 5G death towers. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, all right. I think I'm going to do that. And then... Not sure what else needs to be black on this to be honest I'm gonna do this middle part in black right here this little middle handle area of his weapon again I haven't I really need to start doing this but I didn't look up the stats for these guys before the stream however they're not space marines so I assume they're trash but it would still be nice to be able to discuss how they were in the game, how they are in the game. All right, so that's the black done on the first one. I'm going to set him aside and move on to the next one. Depending on how we're looking on time, I might just... Let's double check here. 17 minutes? All right, we'll keep going with the batch painting for now. Depending on the time, I... Uh, I may switch over to just getting a single miniature done just so you can see the final result on stream but we'll get to that if it comes to it For right now I'm just gonna keep on batch painting oh okay they're just melee versions of destroyers do they get the like same stat or same profiles and everything, or are you just saying that because they're called Scorpac destroyers? <laughs> oh, similar profile and everything. All right, cool, 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 cool. Well, that should be interesting. Um, the new terrain rules are a little baffling to me, but I could be just not a very smart person, uh, and. The train rules could actually be amazing for melee armies now going forward, so we'll have to see. We will have to see. After I said uh, I like to work top to bottom or bottom to top on miniatures, I started in the middle. Just to spite myself, I guess. But it is what it is. The other thing that's nice about batch painting, uh, with models that you've painted a ton of before, like the infantry of your army, it's not a big deal because you know how those go. But for me, uh, I've never painted a Scorpec Destroyer before, believe it or not. And so as I, as I go through this unit here, I'm getting better at understanding the ins and outs of the model. And so like all this stuff here, I'm sorry, I'll get it on camera. All this stuff in the middle of him here went way faster the second time around. So, hopefully the third one will be even quicker. Ah, okay. Don't know the specifics, but from a preview, uh, preview bat rep, the, they have the same rules except the fly keyword. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think that could be interesting. The uh, the wraiths got the wraiths being basically the Necron's only melee threat got a little bit of a nerf uh, in the ninth. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it may have been something to do with maybe they can't go over models anymore when they charge, or maybe they can't fall back and charge anymore. Something got changed with them. So it would be nice if uh, if these guys came along and could supplement the Necron melee options. Get 
this last leg joint. I think it's the last one anyway. I'm also noticing that these guys have different weapons. The first guy had a big honking two-handed weapon. This guy has two one-handed weapons. I wonder if they're actually different weapons or if they have two profiles. And you can, like, split them apart. It doesn't look like these two could form into this one, but you never know. Alright, I'm going to grab this midsection part here, and then the arm joints, and we'll move on to model number three. Just deciding, I think I'm just going to mirror the the first miniature about what's going to be black. Just so they have a bit of coherency. And then get the other arm. These Necron models are really, really good for a thing I've talked about before. About how you want to have your your main color is visible from every angle of your miniature. These guys are so skinny and spindly that they don't block other parts of their model. Um, and so no, pretty much no matter what, you would, you would have to try very hard to not be able to see one of the colors from an angle. So that one's done. Move on to the third one. We'll see if this one goes even faster. Now that I've learned a couple things about the ins and outs of these models. Get these leg joints. As we move to the... Uh, to the release of the Indominus box, uh, I'm going to have to start thinking about what will be on stream starting next week. Um, Friday will be the Primaris Captain out of the Indominus box, um, but after that, I have, the commission will be done, so I'm going to have to figure something else out. Um, I may put polls up where people can decide what I paint on stream. Don't know if I want to give choices and then have them pick choices or just say submit whatever you want. I guess the danger with submitting whatever you want would be I may not own the model. Um, but got to figure that out. I'm going to shake up my Black Templar again. Got all the leg joints, gonna do this midsection. This guy's arm is not the most conveniently placed thing for getting paint on all this stuff, but like I said, thankfully it's skinny, so it can be worked around. Spin him around here. Yeah, I can't even feel that that midsection area went way faster this time. It is fascinating. It's not really something I noticed until I was actually worried about the time. I've never really worried about the time it takes to paint a miniature. You know, it, it takes the time it's going to take. But on stream, I think about these things just so you guys aren't sitting watching the same thing for 45 minutes. And... It's fascinating how your brain just like my brain painted this miniature for the first time 10 minutes ago, but it's already I'm already finding that I'm better at placing the brush so I get the spots I need to be black and so on. So it's very interesting. I feel like if you did this long enough, you could get down to a point where you are whipping out models so fast. 
This guy has different weapons even more. They all have different weapons, I just realized. This guy's got... The other guy has big two-handed. This guy has, like, single-bladed, single-handed. And this guy has double-bladed, single-handed. That's so weird. Now I'm definitely going to have to look these guys up because... Is that three different weapon options? Or is this just the rule of cool and they actually all are the same? It's very interesting. I was looking for the, the wrist joint because the wrist joint was black on the other miniature. This guy doesn't have a wrist joint because he's got a different freaking weapon. Alrighty. Alright, and that is... Just double check the leg joints. Yes, spine, arms, perfect. Contrast, Black Templar is done. So I think now I'm gonna go on to the, normally I would do the, no, I think I'll stick with that. I'm gonna do the Null Noil all over the miniature now. And this is just to dull the silver down a little bit bring the black bring the uh, sheen of the black down just a bit it's a little it's a little non-matte um, semi-gloss I guess is the probably the finish and just gonna knock it down a little bit to be more in line with how I want the Necrons to look just taking a big old brush and I'm just putting it everywhere if it's too thick in some places I'll pull it back off later with a, just a clean, wet brush. But otherwise, just getting it everywhere. And now that contrast is a thing, um, they've kind of taken on the the mantra of liquid skill. But this Null Noil is the original liquid skill. You put this all over your miniature, and it looks like you knew what you were doing with the highlights and the... The low lights and all that. But really, you just pulled it straight from the pot. See that? Plugged the name of the show. In the show. It's called Skills. Alright, so that one's done. Next one. Null oil still. All over everything. I think that's a thing in a... It has a name in movies when the movie uses the the title of the movie like in the movie itself. Like a character says it or something. I don't remember what that's called, but I feel like it has an actual name. And uh, so, you know, I did it. I did that thing. Whatever that thing is called, I did it. The Frank's red hot sauce of everything. Yes. I put that stuff on everything. All right. That one's done. Nice. Nice oily looking armor. And this guy will do the same thing with. Just get it all over everything. This is something you want to think about when you're uh, painting, not just batch painting, but any kind of painting, is you got to think about which colors are going to be present on the miniature when, if you're going to use a wash, when you put the wash on. Um, like, for instance, I was thinking about, because these swords are so big, I was going to do the green on them first because, so I, it, it has time to dry before I need to apply more stuff to it. But then I realized the green on there, when I do this Null Oil, it's not going to work. Uh, it's going to mess with the green. So I had to do this step instead. So it's always something to think about. You don't want to put a, a color that you need to be bright and white or clean and shiny on there and then dunk it in black ink. So it's always something to keep in mind. All right. And that's that one. So that's all three of them done with the Null Oil. I did that pretty quickly, so the first one probably hasn't had a lot of time to dry. So because of that, I think 
Again, I would like to do the green on the weapons next. But because that null oil is still dry and I don't want to use the hairdryer, I think I'll have to move to the armor plates. So the first color on the armor plates is going to be Agros Dunes. And a couple episodes I mentioned that I wasn't, because my armor is two steps, Agros Dunes and then Fire Slayer Flesh, I didn't know if the first step actually mattered. Uh, but I checked yesterday night, and it absolutely matters. The difference in aggro stunes and then fire slayer flesh compared to just fire slayer flesh is a huge one and so i'm very happy that i haven't been wasting my time this whole time putting this color on and then it not actually do anything for me but uh without this yellowy color under the fire slayer flesh it uh it comes out very it looks uh, makes the contrast look a lot thinner than it actually is, and or rather, what probably it is is this yellow undercoat makes it appear thicker than it actually is. Or when I say thicker, I sh should say more pigmented. They're all the same viscosity. That is the ability to flow, but the amount of pigment in the binder is what controls the sharpness of your color. And so the Fire Slayer flesh is significantly lower on that spectrum. So having this base coat under it seems to really help it pop and get the bronze color that I'm looking for. So just going to do all this. Get all these legs nice and agarose dunes. Right. I'm going to do the carapace here. I think that's what you'd call this, the carapace. Maybe that would be the carapace. I don't know. It was a cool word, so I wanted to use it. If I'm wrong, eh, well, we'll get over it. That would have been great if that was a thing in school. You didn't necessarily have to have the right word, as long as the word you used was cool. Maybe that's how we get kids to pay attention in school more. Give them A's if they're if they have a cool answer, even if it's the wrong answer. So just gonna get these last couple of armor panels done here. Make sure I get the backs of them. Okay. Oh, got a little bit on the head. I just wiped that off. Alrighty, that, just deciding if I want any copper on the hand, on the weapon, and I don't think I do, so I'm going to move on to the next guy. I'm just going to check the time again to see if, no, I think we're still okay. Um, going to try to get all three of these guys done in this hour, but it may not happen. So we shall see. I think actually... I think I'm just going to... I'm going to batch paint to the point that the first one is dry and then apply the next step to the first one. Uh, so we won't probably get all three done in this hour, but at least you'll get to see what a finished one looks like. And... Uh, so that'll be good. I failed several math tests because my method of finding the answer wasn't the teachers. Yeah, that's... That's rough. Like, I don't know, I could rant about this all day. But when I was in school, it was, it was always... You show your work and all that. And I get to show your work because you got to learn how to do it. And you won't always have a calculator in your pocket. Well, we didn't exactly have the forethought with that sentence, did we? Won't always have a calculator in our pocket. Yes, I suppose if a 
CIA agent comes up to me and confiscates my phone, I will not have always have a calculator in my pocket. But otherwise, I'm pretty much going to always have a calculator in my pocket. So, but let's not rant about school right now. So I'm done. I'm going to move on to this guy just so we can get this guy done. I'm going to do the green on the weapon. And for that, I'm going to use spring green from scale 75. I'm just going to base coat the whole weapon and any other energy sections, energy cells of this model. So let's see. And as I've said before, this base coating can be raggedy on this sort of thing. It's an energy blade. So if it's a little, if it's got some brush strokes in it or something, that can just look like flowing energy. And by the time we get all the other colors on top of it, you'll hardly even notice. Rule of cool didn't apply in school, sadly. Yeah. We just need to get a... a I guess a Secretary of Education? We need to get a Secretary of Education who plays Warhammer. And they can... Uh, they can change things up. Okay. So as you can see, I'm just giving this a, a very basic base coat. It's raggedy in a lot of places, but that's okay. As long as it's colored, that's all we're worried about right now. I'm going to go back over the sections down here because they were just a bit too raggedy. All right. Do this base of the weapon also. And always got to make sure to get the sides of weapons. I cannot even begin to count the number of models that I have fully painted, in quotes, and then discovered that the edges of the blades had not been painted, and they were still the primer color. And it's like, oh, I thought it was done, and now I have to go back. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. So I'm going to grab this part down here, base coat that. And this blade is even a little more confusing than some others are because it's got curved edges and straight edges and sometimes the curved edges are hidden under a another part of the blade so really got to watch out and this blade uh, and the raggediness of the blade here reminds me of a tip that it's sort of not a great idea to do but in a situation where you just want stuff painted and you just want them to look painted on the board, maybe you want your 10 victory points for uh, in the 40K game. If you think about it, 99 times out of 100, your opponent is going to see the front of your miniature. It's going to be running it towards him or her uh, on the board. So if you just want to get it done, make the front of your miniature look good and the back part of your miniature, just get it done. And as long as your men don't turn around and run away, or women if you're playing Sisters of Battle, um, your opponent will never know. And you'll it'll look like you have this awesomely painted army and really you, uh, you've really got a bunch of veneers running across the table. It's maybe not the greatest advice because then you've got a bunch of miniatures that don't look good from one side. But, you know, if you want your 10 victory points, you got to do what you got to do. Just adding a little bit more green down here. And then I'm going to get the couple little spots on him that also need to be green. There's an energy ball right there. Make that green. Another one on his other arm. 
one on his leg here, one on his other leg, but not this leg apparently, or for whatever reason. And then, just gonna get his eyeballs. One eyeball. Two eyeball. Alright, and that's the green, the first layer of green done, and now, if you notice, the original armor color is dry, so we can move on to the second step of that, which is the Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're just going to put this all over the spots that already had, or that have aggro stunes on them, rather. And because the aggro stunes is laid down already, we get this nice rich bronze color when we apply this. Um, I guess I'll ask you guys, since I haven't really come up with an idea yet, and my plan is to do, obviously, a stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but then every weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, I had planned on doing a basing tutorial of a different kind of base every weekend. I did snow last weekend, because that's the bases I was using for these guys. But does anybody have a specific style of base they would want to see a tutorial done for? Um, I'm probably just going to work through the basic biomes that you always see, but if someone had something in particular they wanted to see, I'd be happy to do it. So if you're watching this live, you know, tell me. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment and be like, Hey, Greg, I really want to see you do a purple alien mushroom field. And then I might just do a purple alien mushroom field. Jungle would be a decent one. Yep, jungle is a good idea. I should do a jungle one. My only trepidation about doing a jungle one is that... The jungle bases I have done, I've only recently done my first uh, jungle base, really, and I, use, I used a lot of products that are not specifically hobbying products, and so I could put a, just a list of them in the description and people could buy them at their leisure if they wanted to replicate the bases, but it seems, it seems difficult. And so I was trying to think of how I could do a jungle base just with simple stuff. So it's definitely something that I need to explore. Crystal shards. Hmm. Crystal shards. I'll have to think about that. I'm not sure exactly what that could be. Now I want to see how to do a scenic forest kind of base. Okay. You mean like a a scenic base as in a base that is meant for display purposes? Or a normal size miniature base, but that just has a forest type aesthetic to it? Alright, I think that's done with the Fire Slayer flesh. I think I'll move on now to the second step of the green. And that will be Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. Like normal, but with flowers and butterflies, etc. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. I think that could be a possibility. Alright, so then with this contrast paint, I'm just going to go and paint in some sections of the blade that are going to be darker than the rest of the blade. And I'm going to follow the contours of the blade itself. And I'm just going to pick some spots and put this paint down. Here maybe. And then here. And this part really it's just up to the painter to make the decision. Not striving for ultra realism here, just for. Just so you don't know exactly what's going on with it. Just so it's slightly not monochromatic. There we go. 
I'm going to straighten that line out. Straighten that line out. Alrighty. Do the same with the back side. Where did I put them on the front? I try to make them match up, even though it's going to be very hard for anyone to see both sides of this at any one time. Still try to get them to match up as best I can. And right here. All right. Normally, I would then also put this uh, dark green on some of the energy orbs and stuff also, but they're so small in this case that I won't do that. All right, so now we, we need to let that dry because, uh, as you can see, that's on quite thick. So I'm going to go to the highlight of the armor panels now. And for that, I'm going to use my go-to gold, Dwarven Gold, from uh, Scale 75. Need that Sylvaneth Owl. Yes, a, a Sylvaneth Owl in a fantasy forest type setting would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? I'll have to think about that. I'm also very curious what uh, what this crystal shard idea is. It sounds like it would be cool, but I can't exactly envision what you mean, how that base would look. So we'll have to we'll have to discuss that at some point. I'm just going not really edge highlighting, not really overbrushing, just kind of putting gold in some places on this armor. Just so that there's some distinct differences in some spots of the armor. Not really being uniform with it in any way just kind of putting it so that when you look at it that the miniature from any direction you see some gold lingering in the bronze maybe some there some down there some back there and under the arms and a, down the arm there and I think right there alrighty so that's that so our green's still not quite dry. So I think what I will highlight the silver now. And actually, no, I will highlight the black now. I'm gonna take the silver we originally used, Iron Breaker, and I'm going to highlight the black. Normally you don't want to use a color that's already on the miniature to highlight another part of the miniature because you can risk turning one color into the the other color you already have. So I could risk having too much silver on this. But because this, what I'm about to put on, is going to be above the Nuln Oil, the silver with the Nuln Oil on it is going to look very different than this silver highlight that I'm putting on. And so for that reason, it's okay to use this as a highlight color. So I'm just going to do a quick edge highlight on the spine here. Flip it around, do it on the other side. Let me get the backs of this one, maybe. Just to mix it up. And do the hip bones. This little power pack thing here. The other hip bone. Maybe the spine a little bit. Then on these joints, I'm just going to do a, a circular swoosh. Just so they have something on them. Get a little swoosh there and there and a swoosh swoosh here and a swoosh swoosh there. Pretty sure that's a song. Old McDonald maybe. And maybe one right there. All right, so then that's the black highlighted. And I'm going to do the same thing with the silver. Uh, for this, I'm going to use Grey Knight Steel, one of the best silvers that Games Workshop makes. And I'm just going to do the same sort of thing I've done with the gold and the other silver. Just kind of put it in places so that it has a little bit of visual distinction, visual interest in a couple places. 
get it along the edges of this top armor piece here. Get it along the side, the ridges up here. And this, uh, this Great Knight Steel has a slight blue tint to it. And since our armor has a slight reddish or orangish tint to it, the color wheel will help us out there and give us more contrast than we might have with a different silver. All right, so that was quick. That's done. So then we can move to the next step of the green, I think. Maybe not quite yet. Dang drying times, man. They get you every time. So, I think I'll just highlight the black a little bit more. I could also start on the base and uh, do the do a little bit of the basing, but the dry time on that's even longer. So, just gonna get some silver in there. All right, that should be good. And I'm using a pretty soft brush. I'm gonna apply this. Well, that's barcode. The Beal Tan Green. I'm just gonna apply that all over the green we already have down. I'm using a pretty soft brush, so I shouldn't, crush fingers, pull up this other green that we have on here. So I'm gonna get the eyes first, and the energy ball on his arm, energy balls on his legs, his other arm, and then I'm just gonna take this pretty thick on my brush and just start at the top and pull it down being very careful because this contrast that's on here is pretty new and I don't want to rip it off same thing on the other side just pull it down make sure it goes across the whole thing and now you can start to see how the raggedy we edges and brush strokes we left can start to give us a sort of hint that energy is moving around on this object. And I'm fully aware that I might be sitting here thinking like, yeah, look at this cool energy moving effect. And you guys are all like, yeah, it just looks like you painted it bad, mate. Uh, try again. But, you know, it works for me. And, uh, that's what's important about you painting. When you paint, don't try to paint for other people. Paint for yourself. That's my Bob Rossian quote of the day. All right, so then I'm going to move to the white. Uh, I'm going to use this white on the face of the Necron, as well as some edge highlights on the weapon. So I'm going to do the face first because the sil we know the silver is dry. The silver has been on for a while. So I'm just going to put on a fairly thick coat of white on here just to make sure we cover the silver in one go. Leaving the little bits of weathering that are built into this model here. But otherwise, just covering the whole faceplate in the white. And then with each energy ball, I'm just going to pick a side of the ball and touch it just slightly with the white. Do a little swoop. And over here, a little swoop. And up here. All right, and that's every green done except the blade. So now on the blade, I'm just going to do a super simple edge highlight. And then we'll come back and wash over it to unify it into the green. You normally don't want to edge highlight, I mean in some situations you might, but normally you don't want to edge highlight with a with white like this on a on a chromatic color. I don't know if that's the right term, but whatever. Um because the the difference is too stark. It doesn't look correct when there's that much contrast on something. But we're gonna come back with a contrast paint paint over everything and really unify this white edge highlight into the whole scheme. I'm just going to make sure to get the edges on both sides here. And then I'm going to get the back edge of this blade. And this would be an opportunity of what I was talking about earlier 
to make the front of the miniature look better. If you wanted, you could do this edge highlight only on the front and leave the back unhighlighted, hoping that you're a, that most people are going to be looking at the front of your miniature. So then I'm just going to come and grab the contour of the blade here. And that same, that has a, has a name, uh, in, in swords, there's a name for the center line that runs down the, uh, the center of the blade, but I do not know what it is right now. So I'm going to call it the line. And I'm just going to do a couple of these internal breaks here. I'm going to get some white on them. A bevel. Yeah, that sounds right. We'll take it. And then I'm going to do some of the cross bits here. Just going to fix my brush. There's a little bit of dried pigment on the end, causing my highlights to look a little wonky. Come back and just put those in there and then do it on the other side. I'm going to do a simpler one on this side. I'm just going to go down the, the bevel of the blade in both or on both sides here and then just do this. Get this reverse edge here all right that should be good so right now maybe it's just because it's a necron thing but it actually doesn't look terrible right now with the white even though the white is way too bright for that uh that weapon but we are going to use the plague bearer contrast paint and unify it all and this white should dry almost immediately. So we can just go in and put, same way we did with the Beal Tan Green. We're just gonna take the contrast, load the brush up, and start at the top and drag it all the way down the green. And if there's too much in one spot, just wash your brush off and soak it up with the wet brush. Okay, then I'm gonna make sure to grab the, the power, power spheres also, and make sure to get his eyeballs. A little too much on that one eyeball, so we'll just pull some of it off a little bit. And with that, I believe our Scorpec Destroyer is done. Didn't quite get to do the full batch painting on all of them, um, but I think batch painting may be best suited for off stream because I think probably people don't want to see. 15 20 minutes at a time of one color but i'm pretty happy with this score to shore i'll finish up the other two this afternoon and uh then do the basing and that'll be that uh i'll be back on friday at one o'clock same group same time same place and yeah and then i'll get to that second basing tutorial over the weekend and then start non-indominus streams next week as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.